So I was having a bad hair day until just a minute ago when I was like, oh, what can I put in this so that it doesn't look like total crap when I get on this uh, video thing. And so I just sprayed this into it. I should have taken it before because it really just helped a lot. Um, this is from Inner Sense, Inner Sense, and it's called I Create Waves. And it's a uh, pink Himalayan salt spray to enhance and add texture. And it did. Hmm. Okay, cool. Well, so today's video has nothing to do with my hair. Um, it has everything to do with those of you who consider yourselves oily, greasy, sebum, excess sebum producers. Um, for those of you who feel like my makeup doesn't stay on, uh, the color dissipates so quickly, I have creases and slippy marks on my face by lunchtime, this video is for you. I've gotten a lot of uh, messages lately from, like surprising that it's happening now. I'm thinking, is it because of the time of year maybe? Um, but from folks who have said, I need help. Everything you tell us about, Katie, is for people who have dry or normal skin. Uh, what in clean beauty is really good for um, oil and, and um, yeah, basically just what's good for people who produce oil? First of all, lucky dogs, you who produce oil. I wish I did. Um, but I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i been practicing a bunch of different layering of products, um, different skin care with uh, makeup uh, recipes. So I really like this one. I'm going to share it with you. The colors are totally interchangeable. There are so many different options, but I think this is a really good uh, layering process. So, okay, so I started um, with this. So for the biome, I reached out to them because the science behind their line is so, uh, it's so profound to me. And I loved, I loved speaking with the founders about um, why they chose the different ingredients. This one in particular, the Restore Essence Serum, uh, is is said to be mattifying. So I was like, okay, I'll take you at face value. It's mattifying. Um, and also, so it's made with Manuka um, honey from the black bee. And supposedly the black bee honey is, um, is even more healing and um, helps to reduce one's own natural sebum production. So for that reason, this is what should go on your face first if you produce a lot of oil. So um, so let's start with this on the skin. It's, it evens skin tone and it, he it heals skin really nicely. But I'm also gonna tell you that in spite of um, this saying that it's mattifying, I found that when I spray it on top as the final layer, it brings so much life back to skin when I'm using powder products. And that's what I need because I don't want, despite using powder products to keep um, the, the product on the face longer, I don't want it to look powdery and cakey ever. So I, I experimented with a lot of different things. And this one, I thought, wow, that, that does a really good job as a base layer because it has a little bit of a sticky tackiness to it, just a bit. So it holds on to the next layers, foundation, blush, all that. However, I have to show you this. This is their other um, essence, and this one is called Adapt, and it has a bunch of mushroom in it, and not mushroom that you're gonna get at the grocery store. Uh, well, maybe. Um, Rishi, Lion's Mane, Chaga, King, King Trumpet, one I can't say, Maitake. Um, and this one is more for hydrating the skin. So for somebody like me, <laughs> this is really great. Okay, so I did that. For those of you who I know a lot of people say, I know it's been said that oil can help to reduce my own oil production. I'm supposed to put oil on and certain oils are really good at helping to decongest skin, that kind of thing. Um, but I know a lot of you say I'm not gonna be putting oil on, however, I have to. So this was part of my process. Um, I love this oil, it's the For the Biome oil. They call it the shield. It's, you gotta read the science behind this, behind why they chose what they chose, how they fermented the different ingredients. Um, I love the way it smells. I love how rich in color it is. But I wanted, and I also wanted to use something that I thought was um, going to mimic the oil that if I produced my own, um, I might get that, the look of, um, you know, the, the shiny, the shine coming through the makeup pretty early on. So five drops of that gives me Gives, you know, catches me up to people who have their own oil production. Um, okay, so that was what I just put on. I love this. So then um, begins the first layer. So I don't talk about this stuff much, but I know that people absolutely love it. So 
I talk about Elima Pure, but I don't talk about their powder foundation ever. This is their satin matte. Um, I actually had never tried it on myself. I carry it in my kit. However, I don't typically love to carry loose powders in my kit because they can get everywhere. So um, I will never forget being on a job early on and taking the person who I was assisting. I took their loose powder on set and stood in front of a fan and it blew everywhere. Haha. <laughs> um, never make that mistake twice. So I tap a little out. I, they Alima Pure has a great shade range. They were one of the first clean beauty brands that I felt like, oh, you guys, you really do care. Ooh, before I put that on, I want to show you one thing because this was a question that I got recently. So this is an eye serum from For the Biome as well. I love this. It's, I love the ease of this. And I also really like, I like targeted approaches to skincare in the sense that, uh, what I put in this area is not something that I necessarily will need on the rest of my face. Of course, eye creams are made for the delicate around the eye area, but I know a lot of people who are super greasy and say like, I'm not using, I'm not gonna use anything on uh, the rest of my face. They would never put oil on, um, but around their eyes, they're finding as they get older, it gets a little crepey and they need a little something extra. So for that person, I would say this eye serum after you spray your face down with this. I love this stuff. I can't say it enough. Okay, so now I have this on. Now I am, I'm, I can do both a, a neutral number two or three even, um, or the warm. So I mix them both. So normally I'm like, oh wait, foundation, get your beauty blender. For this, it's really just about buffing it on. So I would start here really buffing it on. You'll see my sunspots disappear pretty quickly. I read a lot of reviews about this product. People are diehard fans and I can understand why. It makes skin really even looking. You can already see I'm, I'm going through some breakout stuff. So this is a good time for me to show you how good this is. And the ease of it, I think is just, um, makes it all the more attractive. Can you see how immediately that just evened out my skin tone? Whenever I see foundation or concealer video, you know, uh, tutorials from people who have really even skin already, I'm like, but is it, does it actually cover? How would I know? This, you can see, covers, covers really well, but it actually, like, and normally I would say, that I would be able to see this in the sunlight and that worries me. But the way that this just melts into the skin, especially when I spray it with uh, the For the Biome on top, the Restore, it's just so, it's like a, a satiny glass finish, which I love. Let's see. But it, I'm not so great with powders yet. They, I get them in my hair. So if you're um, blonde or white gray hair, um, you might just want to be careful as you're working around the edges of your face. Oh, I need some lip balm. Do you know this brand? I've probably told you about it before. Uli's Ointment. I love this. The woman who makes it is super cool. Um, it says inspired by the la lavish groves of, and then it's, um, it's been probably chipped off in my purse. So I don't know where it's saying it's, uh, the lavish groves of where, I don't know. Um, but I use that all over as like a, an anywhere bomb. Okay. So I already look better. I already look so much more even, I, of course, a little bit on the lids goes a long way. I wanted to show you also, they make, a uh, oil balancing powders that you can use as a primer. So although on me, it's too much, I've just become way too dry. I would start, if you're oily, I would start with the Restore, a couple of spritzes of that, um, and then a little around the eye with the serum, and then a light dusting of the oil balancing. You don't need it all over your face unless you're greasy all the way to the perimeter, but I'm gonna guess you're only really needing it in the T-zone. Look at my skin. Um, it just really forms a great, even barrier or even mask of sorts like i don't see any of my spots 
Okay, so then I wanted to show you, you know, I usually talk about cream blushes, but of course, Alima Pure has wonderful powder blushes. I love this one, it's called Apricot. I use this on the red carpet quite a bit. Um, so I'm gonna take just, so it's quite dense in pigment, so you don't wanna go crazy with it and uh, you can layer. It's really nice. So I just put a little bit on my brush so I wouldn't get too, too heavy of an application. Like I said, it's pretty dense in pigment. Pigment being what makes it colorful. I love this color so much, but still uh, it has no shimmer in it, which is purposeful. I'm not, I'm not a fan of doing too much shimmer. You may have noticed that. Um, I love shimmer on the eyes, but shimmer on the cheeks, once the color wears away, you're just left with little bricks of teeny little shimmer particles, which um, if you're a kid, I like how that looks. If you're getting, uh, getting closer to my age or older in your 40s, 50s, 60s. It's not it's not as much my favorite. Um, okay. And of course, that is not for everyone. So many people will look amazing with like little chunks of shimmer on their face, but it's not for me. I was thinking about it the other day. What's my what is my kind of makeup? My kind of makeup is um, basic beautifying makeup. Like and beauty is different for everybody, of course. So what does that mean? For me, it just means to make you look, I don't know, I struggle with this even saying this, like to make you look your most healthy, which is usually like how you look after you've had a good run, um, gotten an amazing night of sleep, come from the facialist. So I feel like that's, that's kind of the look that I go for. I already feel like I look so much more healthy than I did when I first came on here. Okay, so the next step is eyeshadow. So again, we're going to take a powder eyeshadow. This one is from Han. I love this color. It's called Cool Coconut. It couldn't be easier. Let's uh, put it on with a finger. So Cool Coconut is a very pale shade with some shimmer in it. Like I said, I like it on the lids. Um, you could keep it really, really sheer or you could build it up. And if you build it up, it'll become a little bit more of a, a obvious white. Um, but I love this. I'm going to pair it with a bold lip and you will see a little brush here. Um, and I just love that look because it kind of uh, erases, if you will, uh, the lid in an interesting way. And then I'm going to, of course, of course, uh, put a bunch of mascara on. You could be doing this with a brush as well. I will use a little fluffy brush just to blend the outer edges. And maybe I'll go back in and do a little bit more at the end. The one thing about putting eyeshadow on with your finger, um, and also putting eyeshadow on, on lids that you've dusted with, uh, kind of haphazardly with um, powder foundation, is that the eyeshadow may not just be like a smooth, even, uh, placement or glow or whatever you want to call it, um, a smooth, even surface. It may have a little bit of um, more in some areas than others, so you can just buff into it. That's what I just did to myself. Um, I didn't do a very makeup artistry kind of application. It's a little haphazard, but whatever. So eyelash curler, you know my technique by now. Start straight across at the root. Give yourself a number of good clamps. I know it can be uncomfortable with the pokers in the sides here, and also this part jutting into your face. Um, and then let's turn to get those outer edges up a little bit higher. One thing you always wanna do is examine your pad. If your pad has any uh, rips, if you see that it's not, once you're uh, pressing it, if it doesn't look uniform and even all the way across, that probably means there's a little tear in it. and that tear, when uh, it meets the top bar, can potentially uh, break your lash. It can capture a part of your lash in that tear and then use the top bar to essentially jam it in there and cut it off. So always inspect your eyelash curler. 
Um, and once you get close to the, they say every six months with regular use, um, you want to change the pad. I don't know. I don't always abide by that. Okay, so see how over curled my lashes are? I do that because now, and, and how much more wide awake my eyes look, it's pretty remarkable. Um, and now you'll see why I love mascara so much. So I do use a lot and I start by just putting it at the root and dragging it ever so slightly through. This is my favorite mascara on the market currently. It's from Elia. Limitless Lash is the name. And it is lengthening and thickening and all that good stuff. Holding a curl is not uh, super easy from any mascara. So you wanna go somewhat lighter on the tips so that it doesn't weigh it down immediately. It's like, it's such a game changer when I put mascara on, always has been. Okay, so right now my face doesn't feel dry. You know, a lot of people I think are fearful of uh, powder foundations, making them feel dry, look dry, actually drying them out and leading to dehydrated, wrinkled kind of skin. Um, but I don't feel that at all. And I know I've only just put this on, but I've been experimenting with this product for the past week and wearing it every day in quarantine um, just to see how it behaves and how it behaves with different product underneath it. And also on top of it, I tried cream um, blush on top of it, which it does play well with that. But I think if you are really oily, you may not want to do a cream blush. Um, or if you do, if there's a color you absolutely love, you might want to just uh, set it with a powder blush in a similar shade or the same kind of shade if you can find that. I do that a lot on clients, not necessarily those who are crazy oily, but just to, um, to add to the longevity of wear. Okay, I think mascara is coming to an end. I always like to do eyeshadow first. Sometimes I'll do one layer of mascara and then put on the eyeshadow because then that mascara eyelash will catch the powder from your um, powder eyeshadow fallout and use, and then you put another layer of mascara on and it, or two or three more layers of mascara on, and it uses, or, and it creates something of a, um, a thickening effect, which is pretty fabulous. Okay, so then, I'm gonna put on a lip just for fun. So I'm using, as with everything, I wanted to use like very mattifying. Not that people tend to have any problem with, um, if you have oily skin, it's not that you have oily lips, but I felt like keeping it in the same family of all matte, more matte products was a good, was a good uh, play. So I'm just very professional of me, um, removing the lip balm that I just put on because it did its job, it sunk in, I feel hydrated, but I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be oily and then have my lipstick slide around. This is a lipstick from Vapor, longtime favorite brand of mine. And I love this color, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's called Adore, I adore this color. Uh, it's, it's a red, but it is, it's kind of like a brick, a modified brick red. Isn't it so good? These stay around like crazy. If you had bought uh, Vapor lipsticks in the past and thought they don't stay on, that was a different formulation. These are totally long wear. So good. I could spend 30 minutes on the edges of my lip, my top lip. Um, The thing I like uh, about lipstick like this is that you can overdraw your lips. It's not that it's not a sheer lipstick by any means. Often sheer lipsticks, um, well, not often. You can never really overdraw your lip when you're using a sheer lipstick, but with this, you certainly can. 
Have you ever tried changing the shape, your natural shape, and seeing how you look and how you like it? You can really alter the way that you look in the same way that, you know, getting lip injections can alter how you look. This is more like a smoke and mirrors way of changing your, uh, the look of your lip by just out uh, overdrawing it by just a bit. Now it's not for everybody all the time, but I have to say like probably 75% of the time I overdraw my client's lips because it looks so good in pictures. And if you just do it ever so slightly, it looks great in real life too. How many of you have an asymmetrical mouth? Uh, probably 98% of you, um, of us. And I always need to go back in after I stand back and look in the mirror and redraw that side higher. Okay, so now this is the, the piece de resistance, this portion of putting the top layer on. So if you wanted to do any concealer, I would say this, uh, this is something that I kind of just played around with. I would go in again with a, a nice um, fine misting. This time I would hold it back a little bit. This is the Restore again. Um, the one with the Manuka honey, it smells so good. And I would let that sit for a second. And then, you can take a teeny little brush and go in and spot conceal where needed. So just taking the same powder product that I used um, on the rest of my face and going in and like spot concealing here and a little here. And I do that now because the, the Manuka honey in that, in the um, mist, it really creates a slight, ever so slightly tacky barrier or te uh, tacky texture. So that little bit of powder that I just added on top is gonna stay put. I really love how that brings it all together. Can you see just how, I mean, I don't look dry. I look, I look kind of, I like that satin mat. That's it of the, um, the product is no, of the, of the foundation is no longer a mat. It's like a satin glow. You can really add as much as you want. Um, I'm going to do another one more layer just so hopefully you can see it even better. Can you see? Now, of course, a mist on your face dries, but it dries down and then the, the honey leaves a bit of a glow. So again, it says it's mattifying on the bottle, but I think that that just is... Um, it references what it can do for those of us, for those of you who need the mattifying um, factor on your own skin. But when used on top after a powder application of makeup, I love it. Doesn't it look so good? Anyway, all right. I'm gonna go have yet another Zoom call and be the, um, the most dressed up one on it. Let me know what you think about all of this because this is somewhat foreign to me, the idea of, uh, of needing to layer on products to keep one's own personal oil production at bay or not necessarily at bay but just keep it under control so that makeup can stay put um i'm not going to suggest that you use any of the cream or or oil um, serum kind of foundations i'm going to suggest a lima pure for the win and um and the layers of the for the biome products i love how i love this it's playing so well and it has lasted um seriously all day long so let me know in the comments below. And as you know, everything is uh, linked below too. Whoa, this was a 25 minute tutor tutorial. This makeup would have, would have taken, I don't know, maybe like five minutes if I weren't talking through the whole thing. Okay, bye.